David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech, talking about CE 3303 solids. We're continuing in chapter 9, plane stress transformation. This time we're going to show another way to skin the cat, which is using more circle. Okay, on the previous video, or previous part of this semester, we derived some stress equations for different orientations other than X and Y for a rotation of an angle theta. And so the equations using a equilibrium sum of forces analysis turned out to be this. These three expressions for sigma X prime, Y prime, and tau X prime, Y prime. Okay. Um, it's been observed that you can take these stress equations and you can simplify them and rearrange them to get this form sigma x prime minus sigma average squared plus tau x prime y prime squared is equal to r squared and that is the equation of a circle so there's this German guy from long ago named Mohr M-O-H-R and he observed that this um, you can plot these kind of things on a on a diagram and using a circle and it makes these relationships uh, more visual and I think easier to deal with so this is the equation of a circle sigma average which is sigma x plus sigma y over 2 is the center of the circle and r is the radius of the circle so r works out to be this once again we're starting with these stress equations we get it to this format so here is the basic layout for Moore's circle. I have a coordinate system where the horizontal is positive sigma or normal stress and the vertical axis is shear stress and a little quirk is that positive shear stress is down on this uh, coordinate system for Moore's circle. It's no big deal. We can deal with that if we remember it. Then I take known values of sigma x, tau xy, and then sigma y in the negative of tau xy, and I plot them on this grid. I connect them with a line that passes through, intersects the uh, horizontal sigma stress axis at the point that's the center which is really just the average of those two sigma y and sigma x divided by two and that's the center value that's also where that diameter intersects it of course that diameter half of that's the radius which works out to be this number which is really this distance half of the average sigma x minus sigma sigma x minus sigma y divided by two is that distance right there, the horizontal distance. The vertical distance is just tau x y, so I just get this use Pythagorean theorem up here, square root of square of that plus the square of that is equal to the radius, and that's just this formula right here. So get good at geometry and see all these relationships and it makes it easier to figure I think and more visual and easier to check okay so one more observation here if I have the stress down here at sigma x and tau xy and I want to and I if I rotate that 90 degrees from my stress equations what I am really at is sigma y and so on my circle I need to observe that that rotation is two times that or 180 degrees so if I rotate my element by some angle theta on more circle remember that you're going to rotate your uh, radius by twice that angle so it just kind of shows that in a simple example the relationship between sigma x and sigma y and I should also note that I am plotting 
my shear stress as it exists under my sign convention from the previous video the sign convention is positive shear stress is up on the right side of the face of the sh stress element so I plot whatever my shear stress is negative or positive in conjunction with sigma x the point I plot for shear with sigma y is the negative the reverse of whatever my shear stress is so if it's positive shear stress I plot negative shear stress with uh, sigma y that's another little quirk or trick of more circle that you need to remember so I'm going to do example 9.2 from the book that I did on the previous video see if we get the same answers sure hope so I was given this state of stress 50 megapascals positive sigma y negative 80 sigma x and the shear stress was negative because it's down on the right side 25 megapascals negative so I just draw a grid sigma and tau and I need to think about what I'm doing because I've got negatives and so I want it to, and uh, your circle doesn't have to be perfect as you can tell mine isn't very perfect but it's adequate to to do this so I plot and you, the better you do this to scale the better your results will be I plot my um, Sigma X is negative 80 so it's negative it's on this side of the the vertical line and it's negative 25 so there I gotta remember negative is up for shear tau so that point is right there where I've shown it that way negative 80 negative 25 I plot sigma y over here it's positive 50 and it's the negative of the negative so it's positive 25 in the vertical direction so that's this point right here 50 and 25 and now I just connect those two with a line and that intersects at the center which I can see graphically is about negative something and the exact number is negative 80 plus 50 over 2 negative 15 so that's my average uh, normal stress then I can figure my radius by this calculation up here which is negative 80 minus 50 over 2 squared plus 25 squared 69.6 and now then I just draw a circle of that radius connecting those points and wherever it intersects the other points and now I've got the complete state of stress for any orientation based on this starting state of stress based on the XY coordinate system so now I need to do some more geometry and figure out some angles so I want to know ultimately I want to know what the stress is here 30 degrees clockwise from on an element rotated that amount so I got to double that angle so I, and I want to go also clockwise from this x direct sigma x direction so that's this direction clockwise 60 degrees twice 30 so it'll be helpful to me because I know this radius and I know my center point I need to know I would like to know this angle alpha so that I can figure out what this angle is in here so I can do the geometry and figure the numbers so first I want to figure the angle alpha from sigma x tau xy to this horizontal axis and I just draw a little triangle over here I know that this dimension is the shear stress 25 and this is the radius 69.6 .6. so knowing that I can figure what alpha is by it's the this is the opposite over hypotenuse sine inverse of that is 21 degrees okay as I said I want to rotate 60 degrees clockwise from that so that creates this little triangle which I've drawn in red really a sharp angle in here that's 21, point, 21 degrees plus 60 degrees so here I've drawn this triangle over here 
and just want to get these dimensions. Okay, this vertical dimension is, turns out to be tau xy because I'm starting at zero. And the radius is 69.6. It's the hypotenuse. I can figure that angle. I've already figured it by knowing alpha and then the angle I'm rotating. 21 plus 60 is 81 degrees. So if I know that, I can figure these other two sides of this triangle. The change in the normal stress, which I've called delta sigma, is the length of that line and that is 69.6, the radius, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of a, that angle because it's the adjacent leg of that triangle. works out to be 10.8 megapascals. The absolute value of this shear stress, this number, this vertical dimension of that triangle is 69.6 times the sine of that angle because it's the opposite, opposite over hypotenuse, 68.8. Okay, so now I know the relationships of that triangle, but I got to realize I'm starting from the center, which is at the, sigma, the average stress of negative 15. So to figure what this value is, I've got to add it or really subtract it from my center, which is negative 15. I want to subtract out that delta sigma. So sigma x is this coordinate, and it's negative 15 minus 10.8, negative 25.8 megapascals. Same answer I got from using the stress equations. Sigma y prime is this point down here, 180 degrees from sigma x prime, or at the other side of the diameter. And it is starting from the center and going over, this is a similar triangle, these two triangles. So it goes over, it adds that 10.8. So sigma y prime is negative 15, my starting point, plus 10.8, negative 4.15 megapascals. Same answer I got. Okay, for more circle, tau x prime y prime is the, the value is negative or positive, whatever I get plotted with sigma x prime. So that's going to be up here. So that's negative because positive is down. So it's, uh, it's that dimension, 68.8. And I've got to put a negative sign in front of it because of that relationship there. It's wherever it plots with sigma x prime. So it works out to be negative 68.8 megapascals. Plot that on a stress element like that. Same exact answers as I get with the stress equation. So the nice thing about it is you can check your answers one method with the other.